so obviously the focus of this project was around women and the success that they could um, accomplish but also understanding what those challenges and barriers are um, and hopefully through this process understand what some best practices are that can be applicable to all employers not just um, those who have predominantly female staff or who are historically female or male dominated but really some larger takeaways uh, so, so being on the ground level for this project, being a part of focus groups, being a part of interviews, being a part of some of the direct contact with the female participants really shed a lot of light as to how employers can uh, make changes within their organization to, to improve that, that culture and that feeling of belongingness and to really break down the barriers that employees may feel are limiting them. When we were developing the research question around what does positioning women for success look like and what were the success measures of this project, I think we instinctively thought that everyone would be out looking for a promotion. And it really, Kate, was very evident that that's not always everyone's uh, success measure and that's not what everyone sees as, as what they were hoping to get out of this project. You know, I think really it's about women gaining confidence and that we can do it. Uh, we sometimes question ourselves, we don't move forward when we need to, um, as, as many people do. So we're in our heads a lot and think, you know, how am I going to be perceived? And so it's about thinking about how you're going to say something, how you're going to be perceived, but then just going and doing it. So I had the great, amazing joy of watching women speaking up more in meetings, of hearing about women who confronted a boss that they might have had for 25 years and was there needed to be a courageous conversation between the two of them around trust or autonomy. I saw a few women um, actually get promoted because they chose that for themselves. I saw some women um, who uh, took on stretch assignments, things that they'd never done before or imagined themselves doing. I saw some women decide that those companies were not the right fit for them and start to look around for other opportunities. So um, I saw almost every woman that I worked with find their voice. And what's really important about this project is that each woman was able to identify for themselves how they wanted to achieve success. And uh, so everybody, I think, took away from the project, and you're going to hear this in the, in the video today, a little something different. Women within the workforce, and especially within, within our field, um, because historically it's been a, a male-dominated workforce, that there's this uh, thought process that some of the women can't succeed, but I knew that they could, and I think they just needed that reinforcement, that drive, and that education and knowledge that they have the potential to move forward and move on within the workplace. So with Rhonda, I had one-on-one -on -one sessions where she helped me develop some of the goals that I had. One of them specifically was I had this um, dream for probably the last decade, dream but never really attainable, I thought, uh, to get my coaching certification. And she helped me realize, A, I should do it and why not me? We talked a little bit about through coaching. She talked about how I probably had imposter syndrome where I was doubting myself, who am I to think that I should be the one to go do this? And really what she helped me realize was why not me? I definitely feel like I gained confidence in those moments talking a lot about um, where some some of my fears might might have been that um, getting over that wasn't such a big deal and getting that out in the air and talking about them I my one of my biggest fears when I was growing up was speaking in public and through that conversation through those ten, ten weeks I went out and did present in front of more than a couple hundred people um, at a conference and I've been able to do it successfully since then and, uh, and I think just having that, that fear conversation about what was really holding me back and realizing that it wasn't substantiated <laughs> uh, has really helped me. Yeah, I think the, the biggest message and the biggest takeaway for uh, women um, in general uh, in the workforce is not to underestimate what they have to offer. I think that was probably the biggest takeaway 
to have the confidence to speak up and say I'm, I'm interested um, in, in doing something more and then most importantly to say I'm willing to do uh, to do whatever it takes to get there and, and by that I just mean further develop uh, and, and gain the skills to to get to my end goal. In order to make my day more efficient because one of my goals was how do I be more productive while I'm at work I had to set goals and priorities so I would um, I set up um, every week I'd have in my calendar I would remind her when I would do my billings and I had to stick to that. I would also prioritize what needed to get done for the next day um, before I went home and I tried to get to that and if I didn't I would do it the next day. But I also had to learn that you can't be superwoman so you try to do what you can and then tomorrow's another day. And Well really what I thought was quite profound was the inspiration of people and the challenges that they had. Uh, some of the setbacks that maybe they had and it was an inspiration to see how they've overcome those challenges and ha walking away with a toolbox for women in leadership. So in other words, you know, realizing again the importance of mentoring, uh, having the coaching, uh, having a development plan, uh, looking at sharing information with others, for example, like the book club, which was an excellent uh, initiative, and knowing that you're basically com communicating with your employer about your leadership objectives and aspirations, and you're, you know, making sure that that information gets out there. That, to me, was a really strong message that came out. And most importantly, is don't be afraid to stretch yourself. Don't be afraid to take risks. Uh, don't be af don't be afraid of that. Um, just just persevere and work with the tools that you have. Those leadership tools. The Positioning Women for Success project was not only an opportunity to um, to learn and to grow professionally. It specifically for me helped me recognize opportunities that were already presenting themselves. I I was unaware of what Heather and I did, um, she was able to make some connections with my HR manager who's also a, a young dynamic uh, leader in her own right and also with um, uh, some opportunities that I knew at Green Shield um, with the work that I do with Green Shield uh, as our benefit provider, some opportunities that we discussed that she might be able to pursue at Green Shield. The project really helped me um, in terms of giving me the tools and resources that will help me achieve my goals. Really pragmatic, step-by-step, -step, helpful, um, helpful things that I can do to really promote myself and also to recognize opportunities as they present themselves. It wasn't a pie in the sky, here's how we should feel, this is what it should look like. It was, here's what you can do today. I, I work with a lot of young women and young girls and I think it's never too early to start those conversations about giving back, about being confident um, uh, uh, with yourself and um, about seeing how you can really become an integral part of, the com of, of a community. I think it made me realize that it's not about my success, it's not about Amadeep's success, it's about our success, the we factor. So um, if I'm walking down the hall and I hear a, a nurse or a clinician stop and say, you know what, your team did an amazing job today. They walked into a situation, they were phenomenal, they took control, they used their resources, the job got done. I even have outside vendors stopping in and saying now, the deployment was seamless, your team was on the ball, they're so compliant. That's phenomenal. For, for me, that's my win. I think our group uh, participated in a, in a really unique way in this project. Um, we formed a bit of a sub uh, subgroup that saw themselves as uh, working together with the, the objectives of the, the project itself. However, um, I would say the kind of key success piece uh, is the opportunity to bring voice to a lot of the kind of challenges or thoughts that would have been going on and bring that into a, a forum uh, for discussion and for support um, but done in a very professional way um, and also gave sense to um, togetherness and opportunity to strengthen together and grow together. 
hopefully that this the end of this project doesn't mean that the conversation around this topic stops that this is a best practice and that this is uh, just the scratching the surface on what more research and what more engagement in this area will look like to ultimately affect more women we started this project with a goal of affecting a hundred women and I think we surpassed that within the first half of this project which for us is just an absolute delight so for us this and, and when I say us I mean the project project team and all of the dedicated and committed employers and the participants themselves to keep this conversation going, to really have uh, conversations with, with groups of friends, with colleagues, with, um, with others in your life to really, to really understand what this means and how everyone can take a role in some of the, the things we're starting to drive home in this project. It basically told me that we assume that we're as women, we assume that this is our limit, but that it's really limitless. That we can, if we choose to, step into our uh, growth and into our personal power, that we can do a whole lot if we choose to do it. Um, I, I'm seeing a lot more drive, uh, a lot more um, understanding that there are a lot of doors and they're not locked and they're not shut. They're they're able to be open and it's empowering the women to open those doors and explore other avenues within their careers. Myself, being a young woman in my career, this has been an absolutely eye-opening experience for me. And I think that the honesty and the openness of all of the female participants, whether that be the steering committee, whether that be the employer partners or the participants themselves, really each added um, a special ingredient to the overall recipe uh, for success. And it'll be wonderful to watch the careers grow and develop of the women who uh, took part in, in, in the project. I'm just so excited to see the journeys um, and where those journeys take them for each and every one of those uh, of the women that uh, worked with the, the project. I have to say that in my career, and I've had a long career and a number of jobs, that this was my single most favorite project. That the ability to work with over a hundred women in this way and getting to know what they did and the variety of jobs that women hold um, and watching them grow and getting the emails from them or having conversations during coaching or on the phone when they called me to say guess what I did that and I was successful brought incredible joy I'm getting a little teary-eyed um, and really um, it was extremely fulfilling and gratifying.